Hey guys, Beat Rebels, Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. Lots to talk about in this update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this morning. So two major storm systems through 3-3, still in my forecast. Let's talk about the confidence with the first storm, 226, 227, 228 for the Intermountain West. Uh, confidence has been oscillating. Uh, where will the position of the low end up being? Will it be further north? Or will it dive to the, to the south and really dig its way through Utah and Colorado? If it's further to the south, we get bigger snow totals. So that's really the issue at this point. Um, so I'm going to go with pretty similar numbers to what I was looking at yesterday afternoon. Um, maybe look at this as though this is the best case scenario for snowfall. This is, this is all of my optimism. Uh, Wasatch, 15 to 30 inches, uh, 226 through 227. So it's a, it's a short fuse on this, short duration time where we pick up anywhere from one to two feet across the Wasatch in a short amount of time. 227 will be a big day. Tetons, one to two feet, 226 through 228. Colorado, one to two feet, 226 through 228. Strong winds of 70 miles an hour or more will come blowing in on 226, which may affect some of the snow accumulation. Also strong winds on 227. Pacific Northwest BC, you're going to have major snow from both storm systems. Northeast, next chance of light snows 228 and 33. All right, let me show you what this looks like on water vapor satellite imagery this morning. So uh, your moisture loft is in whites, blues, and greens, and you can see the next area of low pressure right here. That's approaching the California coast. It'll take its time. But up here, this is the main trough up here, cruising through Alaska, and it's going to eventually slide down through Canada and get caught up and picked up in this, in this buckling northern jet. So what's going to happen is we've got two different jets that are going to play into this. I'll just mark them right here. So the southern low is on the southern branch. This one's coming in on the northern branch. The two are actually could potentially merge. So these, these areas of low pressure could merge with the jets. And that's one of the things that may help to produce and generate bigger snows across the Intermountain West. Now, if this first low is too far to the north, then that merger doesn't happen. And you can see the problem with that. So the question now is, where will the position of that low end up being? Let me show you the forecast jet stream. End of day today, 224, here comes the low. Here's an important time frame right here, 226. So there's some merging of the jets. Um, but how far north is that low with the northern branch? How far south does it end up digging? Does it dig all the way into Utah and Colorado? I hope it does. That's, that's what I'm, I'm banking on with this forecast. I'm assuming that we're going to get um, the worst case scenario or the best case, however you want to view it. So there we go with uh, 226. Here's 227. Now, by this point, the low has moved away and we're really in the residual snows, the leftover snow on 228. And the next storm would be loading up with the northern branch. You can see it, some ridging here across the Intermountain West, and then that's gone because here comes the main area of low pressure, 3-2 and 3-3, coming down through California, where it's going to hit the Sierra very hard, and then it would sweep through the interior, 3-2 and 3-3. Let's put some moisture on this. All right, so pretty quiet today and tomorrow across the Intermountain West. Not much happening. Here comes the two jets and the two potential areas of low pressure. So this is 226 afternoon, a belt of heavy snow. Uh, you've got snow falling in Colorado, you've got snow in the Wasatch, the Tetons, Idaho, Montana, Pacific Northwest. Continues to develop. There's your heavy push overnight into 227 in the morning uh, with heavy snow continuing in Colorado. And then it's out of here. Now, if the storm is a little bit deeper, then the precip hangs around a little bit longer. Uh, here's 228, already focusing on the next storm system. Here it comes out of the Pacific Northwest. Look how far south it goes into California and nails California and the Sierra. Very heavy snow here. This is 3, 2 in the afternoon. The whole thing is pivoting and will rotate into the Intermountain West. 3, 3. Look at that heavy snow. 3, 2 and 3, 3. So two different storm systems. But the first one has the most question marks around it, at least for a forecasting standpoint right now. Okay, let me just run you through my latest numbers. So today through the 25th, Pretty quiet across the lower 48. The exceptions would be uh, northwest Montana, of course, northern Idaho, Washington State, and B.C. You're really going to capture most of the snow there. Second time period, 226 through 228. Pretty much what I was forecasting yesterday in the afternoon, 226 through 228. 15 to 30, Wasatch, 1 to 2 feet Tetons. 
one to two feet in Colorado, but not everywhere in Colorado. And Colorado has some question marks. Um, will we be in this zone or will the numbers be lower? That's the question. Big numbers in the Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, BC. Next time period, 229 through 33. The numbers stay very large, just like yesterday afternoon in California, 40, 50, 60 inches of snow across the Sierra. Um, could be a little bit of an atmospheric river contribution. Looking at a solid foot for the Wasatch in this time period, uh, probably 8 to 12 up in the Tetons. And the numbers would continue to creep up in Colorado as we move through 3-3 into probably 3-4. But big numbers in Idaho, northwest Montana, 2 or 3 feet up there in the Pacific Northwest, and interior BC looking good at about a foot during that time frame. Okay, last stop, northeast. Not a lot here, not much has changed. One to three, one to four inches of snow, uh, 228, and probably again on 3-3. Three, three. All right, guys, that's going to do it. You know, really that time, time frame of question is this one right here with storm number one. So I'll continue to watch the, uh, the track of this, uh, this storm system. That's really going to determine where the big time snow and whether we have to um, trim these numbers down or trim them up. So thanks for tuning in here this morning, guys. Always appreciate it, and take care.